Uh, I am Wendell Jones, and I am running for House Seat District 25. I actually grew up over here in Spartanburg, went to Spartanburg High School, went to Wofford College, and was employed by the former Wachovia Bank, which got me over to Greenville, and been there in, Green been there in Greenville, raising my family since 1995, serving in the community in various capacities, uh, always looking for new ways to contribute back. And this year, this year, I really felt a strong unction Probably a little push from my son, who's deeply in politics, um, but really felt a, a strong unction to get more involved. And I was approached by a few people that said, well, you really should run for this office. And after praying about it a little bit and talking it over with my family, we decided to jump in. Did something happen that made you want to run in particular, or was it just kind of the momentum of where you've been going? Um, probably all of the above. Um, as, as I said, there's always been uh, um, just a part of my, my personality in terms of trying to figure out how I can help the community better, served on various boards and things of that sort. But I've also told people I can't unsee what I've seen and I can't unhear what I've heard. Uh, I see a need, I see a need for leadership. I'm kind of obsessive uh, with the concept of leadership. I see some wonderful things happening in Greenville, some wonderful things happening in the state, but I also see some areas that need some improvement. I'm a little concerned um, about the indigenous people of, of Greenville and even the state uh, being left behind with all this wonderful growth. I think we need to have some thoughtful leadership to make sure that as we are being progressive, as we are moving forward and, and establishing South Carolina as one of the premier states in our union, we need to make sure that we take care of our people and bring them along with us. And I've seen that, and, and I see the struggle, and I want to play a part in that and try to resolve that. And where do you see your leadership coming to play in District 25? How would you, how would you change the leadership uh, scenario there? Well, when I think about District 25, I think about two approaches. There's the legislative approach, and then there's the grassroots approach. From the legislative standpoint, uh, my aim is, is to bring a healthy mixture of logic and compassion. Uh, on, on the logic side, I realize that we have to, as a state, as a county in Greenville, we have to be economically sound. We have to be economically progressive. I'm all for that. Uh, I was trained over here at Wofford to make sure that that was drilled inside of me. But I'm also concerned about the compassionate side to make sure that we resist the temptation of putting politics over people. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe as a representative, you're representing the people, we should work diligently to create policies for the people, to make sure we're using our state's resources uh, to empower our people to also participate in this, this, this move that our state is under, our city is under, our county is under. That, that part is there. That's the legislative side. On the grassroots side, I want to bring my um, leadership talents to inspire other leaders. I don't want to be uh, the be all end all. I believe our county, our district has incredible people with incredible talent. And I'm hoping that uh, my stepping into the fray is a source of inspiration. And, and I want to talk to people and, and, and let them know, hey, I know sometimes politics seems like something you want to avoid like the plague. But again, if we don't get into it, then it's hard for us to complain about the outcomes. And so that is my goal. I've been talking with people. There are some incredibly talented people uh, in Greenville, and I want to just kind of coalesce that group, pull us all together, and we learn to lead ourselves. I I'm not trying to be a savior. I'm not trying to be a one-man show. I'm just trying to be a catalyst. And so we can get the district to uh, live up to its greatest potential because it has tremendous potential. And I'm hoping that I can spark that somehow. What's some of the potential you see for your district? What's your vision uh, for that area? My big vision is to help position the district as an economic power. And in order to do that, I have to, to say to you all, I absolutely believe in the potential of the people. Um, we've got to do some things economically. We've got some young entrepreneurs. We've got some seasoned entrepreneurs, a lot of which people don't know they're even there. We need to bring those folks together and begin to use them as examples, as role models, but as employers. 
And so that's some of the grassroots effort that we have in mind and part of our uh, Commitment 25 plan. Also, we want to tap into the resources of the churches, bring them together, let them also be um, the conduits for information, the conduits for uh, financial literacy training, uh, the conduits for bringing the people together to make them and keep them informed of what's really going on down in the General Assembly. Also, I've had a chance to meet with some of our larger employers in the district, and they're excited to have somebody uh, running that's very business-minded, business-friendly, but also I'm convincing them that there's a, there's a part you need to play. You need to be a little bit more heavily invested in the district. It makes sense for you uh, to invest in the people who are within a mile, two miles, three miles for your facility. We need to make sure that those folks are getting a, getting a shot at some of these wonderful jobs that you are promoting so that the people that are there in the district can have the opportunity for a livable wage. Everybody's talking about minimum wage. I'm obsessed with a livable wage. Right now in Greenville, you need to make, if you're a single person in Greenville, you need to make anywhere between 19 and $21 an hour to really keep up with the cost of living. And so we've already got employers there that provide that. But there's a disconnect between the employers and the people. I want to be that bridge. And once we do that, I believe the whole district can prosper. The overarching goal is to make this district an envy, not just of the county, but of the state. How does religion play into, uh, I guess, your upbringing and mm -hmm. your vision? Um, my faith is my anchor. My faith is what drives that point I spoke of earlier about compassion. My faith makes sure that I don't forget that this involves people. When we're, when we're debating policy, I never lose sight that I'm, in, I'm standing in the gap between policy and my neighbor. My faith has encouraged me to always love my neighbor, to do right by my neighbor. And that's why I can say there should be policy for the people. That's why I can say we can't have uh, a policy over the people or, or make the policy more important than the people. We have to craft legislation that, yes, thinks about the future, but also the legislation that deals with our current ills, our current uh, issues in society, to give our people a fighting chance to be able to participate in this unquestionable prosperity that's coming to the South, to South Carolina, to Greenville, to the upstate. We want to make sure no one gets left behind. Some of the issues that are most important to you, uh, just overall, can you talk a little bit about what those are? Well, in talking to the constituents, our, our, we've, we've come to this place. There are two particular issues, and we've touched on them a little bit in our conversation so far, that keep rising to the top. Number one is, is to do all we possibly can to protect voters' rights. There, there are countless tactics being employed throughout our nation. Uh, some of them are creeping into South Carolina that are being used, uh, seemingly have the intentions of suppressing the vote. Got to fight that because if, if we can't vote, uh, there goes our voice. And so we want to make sure, I want to make sure that I continue to fight for those undergirding principles of our, our governing documents that say one man, one vote, that says no taxation without representation. And so I want to make sure that our people can still get to the vote, get to the uh, polls. Uh, there aren't any hindrances that's stopping them. That's number one. And so hold on to our, our, our voices. Secondly, that comes to the top is what we just touched on, is just affordability. And that's a big umbrella that, that has quite a few things underneath it. Affordability in terms of a livable wage. Affordability in terms of utilizing our state's resources uh, to give our, our residents here a chance to participate in the growth. Uh, affordability, funding our technical schools and our community colleges so that our kids that are graduating who aren't going off to a four-year school can go into a program that qualifies them to be um, eligible for some of these jobs. That same system of technical schools and community colleges for the re-education of our older citizens because times are changing. And right now, 60 to 70 percent of those jobs that will give you a livable wage require certification. And so we want to make sure we're providing adequate funding to those institutions, even more so give funding to the point where uh, the education is affordable. And, and I think that is a, a, a noteworthy investment back into our people. It is indeed an investment because there will be a return on it 
as the people are able to afford more, buy more homes, buy more cars, be able to sort support small businesses, increase our tax base, it's an investment. And so I want to make sure that I do my part to make sure that that's a priority in Columbia. Can you talk a little bit about growing up? Uh, were there certain things in your life that changed the direction, the trajectory of the way that you were headed that been really significant in your development? Oh yeah, I, I, I um, grew up with my mom, single parent. What, what helped me is that I had a community. I had a community that believed in me. I had a community that insisted that I live up to my potential. Uh, I had a community that was watchful, <laughs> that made sure I didn't get myself in trouble. We had, we had a village, we had a village. And, and it was wonderful uh, in, in those formative years uh, to hear adults tell you that they believe in you. We need more of that now. We need to, man, we need this village back again where we continue to just encourage each other to tap into our fullest potential. And, and because of that, it developed in me, um, it made me a dutiful person. Uh, it, it made me aware of my responsibility, not just for myself, but my responsibility to others, which is, which is a major, has a, a major part to play in why I'm doing this now. It's so easy to be selfish and just focus on yourself and, and, and your own home. But I owe the village. Some of those folks are gone on. But the ideas that they poured into me are still there. We have a responsibility to one another. And, and before I leave here, I want to be able to, in my final days, know that I did my part.